Before I start this week, I would like to say a few words, and then we can get on with the turning. As most of you know, a guy named Jeff lent me a helping hand here not too long ago, and the first piece of what he sent me that I'm going to use, I think, is cherry. But I'm not entirely sure. These were the markings on it. That could say cherry, or it could just be part of an arrow. You can let me know what you think it is. Sorry, I can't send the smell to. Now, what I'm using it for goes back. Back into a time before YouTube. Back to when, if I needed to know something about wood or tools or almost anything for that matter, there was my dad. He's given me more good answers than you can shake a stick at, and he still has answers to questions I haven't even thought of yet. He is cruising through at 86 now, and arthritis has done his thing and transformed his hands in a way that makes it so he can no longer spend much time in the shop, and possibly even worse, a guy likes to eat after all. Your average cutlery is so skinny that it's hard to get a grip on. So I thought that for the hands that taught me so much, I would try and make something that would make life easier. So Dad, by way of Jeff, this is for you. Welcome to the Tiny Trailer Workshop. The very first piece of that wonderful box of Jeff's stuff. And I want that about that long. And then I don't think I can do it and then I'm going to do that and then on the bandsaw because I would like that into four pieces. Alrighty, so here we go with a, another thrilling installment of cutting. Amazing how, how nicely that cuts when you've got a sharp blade in it. Anyhow, now, now we're going to the lathe. Alright, hang on. Okay, so here we go. Um, we have this piece of whatever it is here. Um, I'll put lots of pictures up here of the wood so you can Maybe you know. Maybe you know. Anyhow, let's get this down to size here. Um, what I'm doing? What am I doing? What I'm doing is I'm making utensil handles. There are times when. Uh, hands don't quite work the way they should. So, gripping utensils can be somewhat of a challenge. Not so much gripping them, turning them over. When you want to, when you want to maneuver them, they just don't work quite good. Handles are always so thin and so small that you have a tough time getting in there anyway. So, my plan here is to make some of a, a more appropriate size. Just about there. That's 
certainly nice wood. Certainly nice. Now, I'm going to put a copper ferrule on there, which is that big. So, I have to take that down to that, a little piece of that. Let's see how much, probably about like that. We'll take a nubbin off there so that we can put collar around it and then drill it out afterwards, later. Alrighty. that left but that's what it's gonna be that's what it's gonna be for size. Now do the rest of the tenon. Alrighty, so let's uh, see about this now. Going to be a challenge, but we'll get her done. Hang on. Okay, so this is uh, number two, so I become a pro. Now, I've taken that down like that, which is, it needs a little bit of sanding. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that piece and we're gonna put it in here. What that does, for those of you that don't know, I'm sure most of you do, Put that. There we go. In there like that, and clamp it tight. Put it back, and then we take this little contraption and put it. Just put it over the top, you know. that's going to do is it's got a flange on there, a, a flare, that's going to, it, it's got a point that's going to make that copper stick out. Alright, so I think that's probably enough. This part. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, that, without even sanding, it just fits right over there. That's good. Now that has to go to there just a little bit because I discovered last time that it would be best to leave a little bit of, uh, of clearance so that the So that when you put the this end in the in the headstock, it uh, it doesn't um, doesn't bind. It's sort of like turning, isn't it? Right around. Okay, so I'm just going to, to glue 
that tip on here. Make sure it's good and secure. Now, I have a thought. Let's see if this thought works. Okay, so we've got a bunch of sanding done to it now, and we'll uh, do a little bit of uh, the old shine juice on here. Yeah, I like that. I like that a bunch. But what's this end look like? Yeah. So now we'll take that out of there and we'll put it someplace safe because. Okay, so the next part of this is I'm going to have to take this to the grinder and I'm going to cut this down to a usable size. And I have the whole array of cutlery to do, so it'll be a while. And uh, I'll show you what I got when I'm done. Well, I do believe those should fit the bill. Um, it was a little bit of grind, especially on that knife, because of course the knife has a, a thicker handle than the rest, but yeah, it went pretty good. And uh, I think they look all right. And I, I kind of think that might be cherry. It, it just sort of has that, that look about it, but I could be wrong. I don't know. So there was a project that did more than make something round. It made somebody's daily routine easier. Funny how a simple idea like this can make so much difference. For those who were observant and noticed the, the jump between turning on the bandsaw and actually cutting something, yeah, that was right when the blade thought, I've had enough and it just fell to pieces. Guess it couldn't handle the fact that this wood wasn't green. There's not a whole bunch to say about the making of this. Grinding the handles down took some time and I'm sure there's probably some place out there that sells kits for, for doing this. But at $10 for a setting of 16, well, 16 pieces, it uh, seemed like a deal to me. The flaring tool, now that was a handy thing to have. Because the, the wood inside the ferrule is pretty much gone, the way it flares out like that gives the a, a, a greater gluing space to, to fit. As per usual, I seem to have too many things going on at the same time. I'm in the process of trying to learn my way into a web page, and there's still lots to learn. <laughs> lots to learn. And of course, with the the new ground of, of web pages and stuff like that, you should have you should have a new intro. And so, have that web page up in no time. Better get the intro up and running right away. So I did. Got the extra to do, and of course, you can't use any of it until such time as, as you've got the website up and running because the intro 
invites people to visit the website. So, it shouldn't be too long before normalcy returns. We'll see. The making of the, uh, the part about my dad brought back an awful lot of memories of, of the things that he used to build and the way he built them. And, you know, the way I learned from what he did, even though at the time I didn't know I was learning, it's some awful cool stuff. Um, I'm awful lucky to have had an Alberta farm boy for a father. See, the other, the other teacher that's out there that uh, started making videos again, um, Captain Eddie. Uh, glad to see you back in the shop there, big guy. He's the, uh, the one that, that introduced us all to, to OB Shine Juice. One third, one third, one third. Captain Mitty's uh, got lots and lots of good videos. Well, I got webs to weave and stuff to, to, to turn. Got lots of stuff to turn. Um, so, I want to thank you all for watching. I really do hope to see you all here again next time.